broadcasting live from the motherfucking underground. I feel like I'm back in my college radio days, Mighty Sword. But I, instead, now I have a bigger signal. I got a big antenna. Word. You know, we reaching the whole world. Yeah. But if I would believe it. Welcome to another episode of the What Did He Say podcast. Burr, burr, burr. I felt like that was my turn to do. Sorry. That was good. It's your boy Chingo Bling. Maricel the Duracell. Yeah, uh, we're literally fresh off the plane. <laughs> It's crazy because I really thought, oh, we're going to get home and relax. And then I thought about, it's like, oh, shit, it's Monday. We got to drop a podcast. Never mind. These motherfuckers going to be mad as shit. I'm not going to get to relax. I'm actually going to get to podcast. You know, at least the Which only I, thing that I I mean, I, got, I love doing Yeah, it. that's what I'm saying. The good and, thing and is we're back in the house. Yes, it's, in, it's right in the back, right behind the house. So, um, and really, man, like, since we started this whole Patreon thing, it just, you know, it's just a more intimate you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like it's like it's like DM. It's like bam yeah. bam bam bam. What's up? You good? Dot dot. Uh, they got the private little. It's called the lens. It's like the little story as uh, part of the app mm-hmm. for Patreon. But uh, anyway, like I really, you know, I ain't gonna lie. I was getting a little bit burnt out. Y'all y'all might have heard it on on the podcast a little bit. You know, but uh, I feel like I'm you know falling back in love with it, man. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have fun with it. You know, it's like college radio days. So well, I, I think I think you were. It's not so much that you were getting. Like not liking it, I think it was more so. It's we had so much going on, yeah. and the and the tour was about to kick off, so that was another thing that was on the plate. So in addition to things, I mean, we do it to ourselves. We we had this whole discussion, guys. We had some serious conversations on our route to uh, Naples from Miami oh, yeah? to Naples. Mm-hmm. We were had some deep deep combos in regards to you know uh, things that we want to do with the podcast, things that we oh, want yeah. to do with our Patreon. Basically, she was drilling me. On the Patreon. Have you replied to everybody? Have you been posting to the lens? Are you showing them behind the scenes? And don't be posting the same stuff you posting on Instagram because that's not fair to them. They, they're the VI, VIPs. They, they need to get... And don't be uploading that podcast to everybody at once. You need to give... Well, let me tell you why, babe. It's because... Okay, I'm just going to give you an example. You're a big fan of Joe Rogan or... Uh, Joey Diaz, Sam Scott Adams. Scott Adams, right? So you're you're big fans of them, right? Mm-hmm. You you decide to join their Patreon and pay this monthly fee, right? Mm-hmm. But they got to take it serious. They they're giving you the same shit they're giving you on social media, yeah, so that's so that. exclusive about it. So that's why I was just saying. Yeah, like, so it's it's top priority. Yeah, it's top priority. It's top I feel priority. like these folks are making they they want the exclusivity. They want to be more intimate with. They, they, and, and I don't think that they understand that they're actually talking to you. It's not like we have someone else running this, this uh, app for you. I'll give you an example. I think they want shit to get made. Like, bro, make some cool shit. Yeah. Can you just make some cool shit already? What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Ran out of cool shit? No. We have four scripts, four episodes to a series that's hilarious, written by Javi Luna. Funny than a son, bitch. Um... But, I can't wait for that. But you know, it's but his, this was the situation. What are we gonna do? Waste months trying to pitch it to somebody, some little network? Mm-hmm. Are we just gonna give it to the people on YouTube for free? Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers on there hating and shit, and getting shit for free. Uh, or why don't we go ahead and launch the Patreon thing, and we could, you know, that the series could be there. You know what I'm saying? Like either they all get it or a certain tier gets it. Well, remember, but we're excited. I feel like okay, so we dropped the episode one to the Patreons. And then when episode two is about to drop, then we let the YouTube people have it. So there'll be one episode ahead. So there'll always be one episode ahead. And so that's how I think you should do it. It's like HBO. Yeah. Like a network. Even even like um, people that had that... um, Random, man. Huh? Your minutos. Pinches. Pelos. (laughs) (laughs) These little blonde, straight hairs floating around. But um, I think that it's definitely something that... uh, I can't wait. I'm excited about it. Actually, uh, top priority. Top priority. And speaking of all this, you know, we just had a show in Naples, which was great. Shout out to everyone that Hell came yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. I, met, I got to meet some of the patrons. Yeah. Hey, and man, I'm a patron. That's exactly. what's up. I love the podcast. Man, thank you. I did too. And so I wish I would have gotten the guy's name. I probably still wouldn't have remembered it, so it doesn't matter. But uh, he came up to me and he said that, you know, he just became a patron. He's excited and that he loves the podcast. And so. I love, 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 love when someone from the podcast comes up to me because I... Did he smell your hair? When he said all that? so weird. Was he all like, yeah, I love the podcast. 
Oh, herbal essence. Oh, well, he's not Biden, so uh, let's hope he's not doing that. She's so. like, babe, he's a patron. Déjalo. <laughs> yeah, right. Let him smell my hair if he wants. Jesus, he's pain. Chingo. No, but seriously, he came up and he said, you know, uh, the cool part also is that his wife became a fan of ours because of him. So she had no idea. I guess she thought Chingo Bling was just this bro guy, right? Mm -hmm. And so she, I guess, had no idea that Chingo Bling had a wife who also is involved in all this. So she was like, when he told me, but wait, have you want, have you been checked out his wife? She's like, why would I check? Basically, like, why would I check out his wife? Like, that's yeah. so stupid, right? Mm -hmm. And so then he's like, no, you got to check her out. She's pretty, actually pretty dope. She's cool. Like, check her out. And I was like, oh, that's really nice. You know, so anyway, she's like, and then I started following you. She's like, I thought you were going to be another, like, little Instagram model that's always posting <laughs> selfies. And I said, oh, I'm far from that. Wow. And, 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 and it was funny because. She's like, oh, you authentic. Okay. Listen, no, it was funny because right before they were waiting to talk to me, this guy wanted to take a picture, right? Mm -hmm. He goes, can we do the selfie? And I was like, yeah, that's fine. And then he's like, um, I know you're a female, so you're probably going to want to take the selfie yourself. And I said, what? I'm, I said, I'm going to tell talking, you Keep talking. I'm going to go grab me a code, eighth wonder. I said, I just got off the plane. I'm a little I'm embarrassed to admit this. I was like, but I don't know how to take selfies. I, I suck at them. The I don't know what to do going. with my mouth or my face. Like, do I smile at it or do I like do a smirk? But th this fog right here, the fog machine is heating up. Uh -huh. That's for the patrons. We know they get fog in that. Oh my God. You're going too far, Chingo. Um, but it was funny because I didn't know what to do. And so he was like, Are you sure you don't want to do that? I said, I am positive. Like, you take the picture. You're probably better at this selfie thing since you already know how to angle the, the phone, which I thought was funny. He was like, No, you got to put it like this. I'm like, Okay, obviously, you know how to do the selfie thing way better than I can. I suck at them. Um, I hate to admit this, but I've actually watched YouTube videos on how to take selfies because when I have taken selfies, I've told you this a million times, they get so many likes versus like things that I post that are actually educational or inform oh, oh, informative. Oh, listen, mm -hmm. that's that crisp eighth wonder right there. Don't phone. <laughs> Don't forget Chingo de Mayo, my third. All right, tell you guys, keep going. Um, so I was just saying, mm -hmm. like, you know, so it was funny because he knew all the angles, like he knew how to hold the phone and I didn't. And I was like thinking to myself, like if only he knew that I've actually watched YouTube videos on how to take selfies because I have no idea what to do with myself. But anyway, uh, then they came up to me and they were like, you know, that's when they gave me the whole spiel about, you know, how excited they were. They just became patrons and, you know, they're a part of it and they love the podcast. And she was like, I now listen to your podcast as oh, well. Dope, dope. So I was like, oh man, it's, her like lounge. A little, it's a little ripple effect. It's called Her you know? Lounge. Yeah. So what we're trying to say is, look, this is the official intro. Porque el intro debe comenzar así. Yeah. This episode of the, uh, what do you say, podcast is brought to you by some very special patrons. All right, wrapping that up. Mm -hmm. And I just want to shout some of them out. Some of them out. <laughs> A ver. Omar Zavala. Janet Snyder. Gracias. Snyder. You hear that? You got some fog. That's Janet. Good. It's a fog machine, baby. Know. You know, this, this fog is brought to you by the patrons. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the patrons, you got fog. Uh, Jasmine Chavi Chavira. She's actually a $10. You know what I'm saying? She's okay. here too. That's what's up. That means you're a hardcore, hardcore fan. You need extra, extra cheap. Luis Montezuma y también... I, I feel like you shouted someone out with that last name already. Chavira? No. no Luis Montezuma? Ryan Solis? Oh, maybe. Uh, maybe that's someone who was from the last episode. Oh. Alright, let me turn it off. So that's some exclusive fog yeah. right there. You know, we're off the cuff, baby. We're off the cuff. Ain't none of this shit scripted. Oh, man. Right. That smells, boo. Alright, we just got back from Naples, man. Um, food was delicious. Shout out to DJ Showtime. DJ, DJ Pepe. DJ Pepe was also in the building. Um, it, it's a new rule because in Naples, uh, you can't be getting too high. You can't have a fog machine going too hard. You can't be getting too high before. Hey, babe. You want to open the door? Hey, aquí está Snoop Dogg. Special guest, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> burr, burr, burr. What's up, homie? I heard you was in the LBC. What's up, Chingo? Crazy thing is I, I've actually met and kicked it with Snoop. Word. Yeah, so that's that's pretty good. Can I taste that? Is it's it good? delicious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it better than the other one? Okay. I mean, what's the other one called? I, I'm still just trying to train my palate to like what to look for, mm. like to know like oh that's a wheat, mm -hmm. you know, oh that's a light, whatever. 
I'm not an expert, but uh, I do want to give the patrons a show that's all about talking craft. Mm -hmm. So sit down with an artist, maybe some of the folks that are on uh, Chima de Mayo, and just talk shop, take some beers. Oh, yeah, this is really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially it's so cold. Yeah. Delicious. Uh, La Yelera brought to you by the patrons. Mm -hmm. um, so shout out to Naples, man. We're headed to Phoenix next. Uh, shout out to Captain Brian at Off the Hook Comedy Club. Southwest Florida, y'all show love, man. Bonita Springs, Immokalee. Um, Florida, man. Florida's just like the shit. They just show so much love, man. I, I, I realize like how many like friendships, relationships, like DJs and, and people and artists and everything that I've, you know, just from back in the day, just, you know, going out there and, and networking. So shout out to all the DJs, man, for Forward Believe. Yeah. Uh, it was great to... Uh... Speaking of DJs, we have Phoenix coming up. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to be on the radio with Tino Pacino. I met him, man, when he was, like, super young. He was, like, the youngest DJ to ever be on the radio up there in, like, Amarillo or Lubbock. Oh. And uh, the panhandle, it's like, man, you would think, like, man, how you going to make it? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not a lot of opportunity. Tino ended up, he's got, like, a syndicated radio show. So shout out to him. We're going to uh, uh, kick it with him a little bit in Phoenix, get him on the vlog, check out the new YouTube. That's where the new vlog will be. Mm -hmm. Seve TV. And uh, so, yeah, man, we just got off a plane, and we had... Literally just got off the plane. Yeah, and, you know, and I know, like, the right now, the elephant in the room is that, you know, coronavirus shit, people panicking and shit. But uh, I know where our stance is, right, Vieja, our household? Yeah. The blings, is we ain't stressing, man. Pinche la corona chingue su madre. We can't I mean, panicking. I'm not going to lie to you. At first I, I, I did I kinda, my research. I, at first, I kind of was. I was really, like, stressed out about it because... I mean, yeah, you got to be on well, well, we have a little one. You know, and, and that's and, and, and parents and, and, and we're parents. Um, and then you know, here's the other thing about that as well. Um, I kind of keep Penny in quarantine as a, <laughs> she already quarantined, bro. <laughs> My poor child doesn't do anything. The uh, crazy thing, man, is this shit has made America more hygienic because all of a sudden people are reminded of the importance like, bitch, wash your fucking hands. Okay, I seriously have to say something about this. I think people were not washing their hands. About washing their hands. Let me tell you what's crazy, babe. I've witnessed females. No, I've seen females let the water drip on it. At the, at the, in I the restroom. It. They're like, I splashed you about two, three seconds. We good. Well, I've seen the women in the restroom pee and then just walk out. Nothing. No washing hands. No nothing. No <laughs> hand sanitizer. <laughs> I should do a bit about that. Like, I seriously. I have a theory about this corona. Uh, ladies, we got y'all got to step up your hygiene because my wife done told me already. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's so, I, I literally have wanted to go like this to someone, like tap them on the shoulder, like you just walked out of this restroom without washing. Excuse your hands. me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Marisol, what are you doing? It's she, gross. Fuck that bitch. I'm like, <laughs> I seriously think that it's the most disgusting thing ever. Like, I don't know how you go to the restroom and then don't wash your hands. Besides the point, it is funny though because if you think about it, everybody's so scared now. They're buying up all the Lysol, all the um, uh, antibacterial the sanitizer. Uh, no, antibacterial soap as well. Yeah. Haven't you seen that? That they bought okay. up. They're not buying regular soap. They're buying antibacterial oh. soap, which is the Dial soap. I think is the okay. one that does that. Um, and then the hand sanitizers mm -hmm. are being bought up like no one's business. Mm -hmm. um, but it's crazy because. You know, you just, if you think about it, it's like, well, shouldn't you already have that? I always carry, these are the things, I think I've done a, a purse thing. I've always carried hand sanitizer in my purse. I carry booty wipes in my purse. And I ca carry Lysol wipes in my purse. I've always done it. I always have. Because some of y'all need to start carrying booty wipes. Everything. Because your booty needs to be hella clean. <laughs> Who wants to go to the restroom and just use dry paper? Oh my goodness. No. No, no, no. You need to get that booty right. This episode is brought to you by Booty Wipes and, and the patrons. All the patrons, we shipping y'all some booty wipes. Oh my God, how funny would that be? We got some personal wipes. Uh, what did he say? Podcast oh, booty wipes. Booty wipes. That would some be of y'all, some of y'all ain't been, you know. Come on now, y'all's hygiene is fucked up. That would be hilarious. Seriously, even if we send out uh, hand sanitizers. Yeah. Hey, you so can, you can't make those. But anyway, I, I, I riffed on stage a little bit about coronavirus and. Uh, Midnight Hobby both had great sets, mm -hmm. and uh, it's the coronavirus. Uh, Midnight was like, man, a lot of people talking about that shit, right? Like the comedians. And I'm like, really? Well, 
I think I just said some fly ass shit. <laughs> I'm like, keep it. You know, remember, I was barbecued right before I went on stage. You know, because stress is a trigger. Instead, I need to replace replace that habit with, like, exercise or something. Like, man, do some fucking push-ups and shit. That way you're not too fucking barbecued. So the next show I do, um, I'll probably just be, have to be off of just adrenaline and nerves. Fuck it. Like, you know. Well, I'll t- I told you already what, what I think. Excuse me. If you are going to be barbecued, I already told you what needs to happen. Um, I had fun, though. I got to write a lot. I was writing a lot on stage. Like, I didn't even get into the birth story. You didn't get into mm, a lot of nothing. It was a lot of new stuff, too, so I'm proud of myself that I did really? some new stuff. Really? stuff about Luisa. I know, but you barely did it because you were riffing so much. It was the first time I ever told you Yeah, you story. guys have no idea. Listen, I, I, everyone's I, like thinking... Man, the feedback like, was great after the show. She's a fucking bitch. Like, it's, it was a different there. type of performance. It was a different energy. It was a different uh, delivery. It was a different style. <clears throat> so, the timing, the pacing... Like, okay, what you guys don't understand is he and I sit behind the scenes. What happens is the set is being worked on, and so I read it, and you know, we kind of discuss what he's going to do on stage. I I know, but I know the topics. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So, when, and I know the premise, I guess, of what's going to be talked about, Mm -hmm. but, um, you got to remember, guys, I sit in the back, and my job is to literally observe what he does and take notes. So he went. You gotta up take the good with the bad. He went up there, barbecued, and Javi was barbecued too. Yes, but but Javi stayed on his material. Yeah. Okay. And I ripped. I had fun. Feedback was great. That's all that matters. Okay. Yeah, I I got to write, and you know, so we we talked about it. There's pros and cons to it. So Javi and I were saying like, it, you know, it can kind of numb quiet certain parts it's mm-hmm. like your filter and your brain changes because it is stimulate like it's psychoactive mm-hmm. so your filter changes you're kind of in a different little zone so it kind of like mutes some parts and amplifies other things sure so i got loose a little bit and i had fun and james and i uh james scott we had a conversation in miami where we all met up well tell me james people. scott is well Sorry. it's our, our 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 friends in miami mm-hmm. but he's uh the trainer to jimmy butler he plays for the uh, miami heat Mm-hmm. So he's like elite trainer, and the thing about him is, his thing ain't jumping jacks and pull ups. His thing is all mental. He's Definitely, a, he's a performance coach. Mm-hmm. That's the part that like, oh, okay. We need to have. I was don't hoping, let them confuse you as no trainer. Bro. I was hoping it's that we all were, mental. We were gonna get to podcast when we were out there, but we didn't take anything, guys. I was really proud of us, we Chingo and I. Stuff. And let me tell you guys. 90% of the time, if you watch my vlogs, you know that I always tell you guys, even when we're in out of town, I make sure to bring my work things so that I can work when we're having this downtime until the show kicks off. Um, because sometimes I have, you know, time like that's no one, I don't have to worry about a child. I don't have to worry about other things that are around me. I can actually focus 100%. So anyhow, I forgot that we were leaving on a Saturday, which means... No one's open, so even if I sent off an email, no one's going to reply. And I was like, oh, I'm going to leave my backpack behind. I'm not bringing my work bag. And it was like, oh, yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah, neither am I. We well, don't need to. I was what, like, oh. Yeah, because we could do so much on our cell phone, too. Don't don't let it get you twisted like we're not mm-hmm. working and we're actually fully relaxing. But uh, the main point is that we're making, keeping our cortisol levels low, the stress hormone low, like a full-time job. It's like top priority. Like, we can't be stressed because that's going to fuck up your immune system. And it just leads to a bunch of shit. We can't be stressed. Like, we're the, we're like the heads of the thing. Mm-hmm. You know, we're all fucking um, just like, I, I can handle it. I can, I'm, I'm just take it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like everybody has a breaking point. Like, you can't be, you know, spread yeah. thin, trying to meet all these little deadlines. and, and well, we're, we're guilty of it, though. Yeah, because like you just finished saying, like, I got to send this deal memo to the, uh, one of these clubs or something. It's like, wait, it's a weekend. Yeah. And I realize that other, but I, but I do want to, uh, congratulate ourselves because we actually didn't do any work this weekend except for in like rest. We vlogged a little bit. I mean, I did vlog. Yes. You, you were editing on the plane. I yeah. took a nap. Yeah, I did edit. Uh, well, my vlog has to drop today. So that's why. It has to, right? Okay. I mean, you see, I, you, you see, you, you see have the, to be consistent. You see the deadlines, babe. you see the deadlines YouTube be putting on people, man. Well, you need to be consistent. And so I feel like in order for people to... Oh, 
They actually need them to know that it drops on Monday. And so it, well, look, it, it makes look, no sense I, to drop it any other day. Once you get a Patreon, or if we do the Blings Patreon or something or whatever, there you have like a extra incentive. It's like, these are your diehard loyal people that signed up, that say, yes, sign me up. Mm-hmm. I'm here every month. I want to see what you make next month and the month after that. Yeah. So, you know, versus YouTube. How, what's the percentage, speaking of analy- analytics, what's the percentage of people that watch your shit that ain't subscribed? Mine's 50-50 right now. It's so annoying. It's, uh, it's actually... Uh, it could it, just be like... Yeah. Going. It's like 48% are subscribed and 52 are not. It's really weird. Like, I'm like... That's why I like ended my vlog today that way. I'm like... I see you checking out my vlog. You're watching it. So why not just hit the subscribe button? And she said it like Jake Prince, though. She said it like Jake Prince. She was just like, let this be a courtesy call to all you non-subscribers. <laughs> to all you lurkers. You are on the path are you watching? for self-destruction. You are watching, so just now, subscribe. Now, let's get this shit straight. We got analytics. <laughs> Bass. Well, Bob ties. I pat, pat. Well, I mean, um, speaking of that, did you see the whole thing with um, the Megan the Stallion? How she was saying, like, she she don't know really what that's about. And she's not, you know, speaking lies on him. So I don't know what he's mad about. Well, I mean, I think everybody looks at stuff from a different perspective. I don't know all the, the details of their business. It just seems like, um, you know... Mr. Prince stepped in to help, you know, rectify a situation, mm. participate in, oh, okay, little homie, that's what, that's, and he made an interesting point on his caption, because, you know, I'm a nerd for, like, music and just strategy and, you know, mm. politics and shit like that, um, so he mentioned something on there, he's like, you had a good deal to begin with, I hear you, you want to renegotiate, mm-hmm. but it's like, you're getting 40%. And what new artist that's not that established that has yet to turn in an album? That's the key point. Mm. So it's like, okay, you got some singles that are popping, but it's almost like, all right, homie, so what's going on with the situation? Well, my artist, you know, she's over there with Rock Nation, and they supposedly they had lawyers be like, did you know this was in your contract? Did you know this was in the contract? Mm. Because sometimes they want to help. It's not in their best interest for an independent label. To be in the mix, they want to try to cut people out, you know. But uh, it's interesting, you know. Music business is, uh, it's, it's, you know, there's contracts involved and paperwork and lawyers and. Oh, speaking of that, the song like this and like that, off my album, they can't afford a song, which I uh I got the masters back after I did the deal with Asylum. I tried, to, I played for the music video. I tried to upload it to YouTube. Mm-hmm. My shit is banned. <laughs> like oh, I cannot, yeah. I cannot upload it to Facebook, Instagram. I tried slowing it down. It still detected it because you know, according to them and their records, um, it's still owned by like Warner Brothers Music. Mm. Um, but you know, our people are talking to their are going to talk to their people and uh, just to so they can update their records at YouTube. That's like, oh, in actuality, this is his. Yeah. It's his again. Mm. You know, we we had a partnership. And uh, we parted ways, and he kept the intellectual property. Mm. So take the strike, you know, let let him upload his shit. So, yeah. But that would be cra- that'd be kind of crazy that some art you created. I have the file. I think I'm gonna give it to the patrons because mm. I have the file. You Is know, it not on iTunes? The song, yeah. Yeah. But so but how do you, okay? Let's let help because I'm sure some of the listeners probably the same same as me. So. If Warner Brothers is claiming to own own the rights to the song, because right? at one point they were the distributor. Okay, so if they claim to to, to own the rights to the song, right? Mm-hmm. How are you able to get it on iTunes and get credit, like get paid for it on iTunes if if somebody guess, streams it I or guess, downloads or buys it? How does that I work? I guess the uh, the little like detector, the little system mm-hmm. thing that that figures out. Wait, the thing that's built into YouTube, mm-hmm. every time you try to upload Lion King or something that's owned by mm-hmm. somebody else, a Canelo fight that's owned by HBO or somebody, um, it'll it'll ding, reject. Mm-hmm. It matched. They uh, they ran it through a system. Oh, that belongs to this person. 
you know. But on iTunes. But iTunes, I guess they have a different system, different detection. So is is Warner Brothers? Because iTunes is very strict. I mean, I can't even use some of your music on my blogs. We've talked about this. So is it, that could be the reason why you can't use them on some of those songs because they're on that They Can't Deport Us All album. Oh, that's from that some album? Of the, it's from that album. Wait okay. a minute. Well, send me a screenshot and I'll forward it to uh, the legal team. Because the staff. <laughs> when I've tried to use um, some of your songs for my blog, remember I've asked them, like, what is this about? I bet you that's what that is, Pete. Like, I bet you they're claiming it to be, you know, like they, they have rights to it. Mm -hmm. So that might you be can't it. use it. That might be Versus it. the other ones that I am able yeah. to use, you've got the rights to. So that might be it. But all, all in all, it's positive because I'm now going to figure out. This, this, is what, this is what it showed me. Are you familiar with how Prince found a way to put up a paywall around his music. Like, you can't really find a lot of Prince albums, I don't know about now, since his passing, rest in peace. Um, but for a while, you couldn't find Prince's music on iTunes because he was hardcore independent. Y'all have to remember, do y'all recall he wrote the word slave across his cheek? Yeah. And you know what label he was disputing with at the time? Mm -mm. Warner, mm. by coincidence. But, um... Uh, Babe, uh, so, off subject real quick. I'm sorry. Right, I keep hearing ahead. a noise in my... It might be one of these lights. Oh, uh, okay. That's exclusive. Do, uh, do they hear that? They might. Oh, okay. You know, if not, we, we got backup audio. Okay. So, what was I saying? Uh, uh, oh, this is what it taught me. Thing. This yeah. is what it taught me. There's another artist, uh, Ryan Leslie, I believe. He uh he first produced uh, Cassie before she went with Bad Boy. So, he's like a dope musician. He makes music. I think he pulled all his stuff off of the streaming and say, you know what? This is for like my fan fans. This is on my website. Like you got to come to, I know I'm, I'm going to lose a lot of people. You're going to be searching and you're not going to feel like looking into, hey, how can I hear this music? Mm -hmm. But it's a smaller community, but supposedly it's just way better. He's not having to get these little stream pennies. Mm -hmm. You know, the stream pennies, they add up mm -hmm. to some good money, but it's still like a fraction of a cent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a crazy math, but uh, but again, we're moving towards the direction of th come to the Patreon, and that's the direction we're moving in. We're trying to treat it more like a network, and we're broadcasting to y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like we're not just gonna give shit away and and break our neck for people that's just lying. You know what I'm saying? Not, nothing against like we like people to enjoy our content free as well. That's the ideal situation. We want as many people. That's how I got known. People were downloading my music. Free, mm -hmm. you know. Well, what what I what I'm gonna say about this Patreon, I'm sure people are like, who cares? Yeah, about yeah, this yeah. Patreon? Yeah, I don't want to make this. I don't want to. I don't want it to sound like a. I don't want to make it sound like a telethon. But I'm very excited about it. So don't 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 make the same infomercial. We're not. We're and just this is not the. And this is not the Patreon the, uh, episode either. I'm what. But I do feel. We're just talking shit. I'm just back here enjoying a uh, cold eighth wonder with my wife. You know, at the crib. You know, <laughs> and you know, we'll see what happens. Well, I just feel like um, what I personally like best about this, about the Patreon, I'm going to be honest with you, is, again, going back to my example that I was trying to give 1, you. 1,000 true fans. Okay, let me finish my Sorry, sentence real quick. Thanks. Um, so, anyway, one of the things I was trying to tell you was, <laughs> is you, you know, you pay for, like, exclusivity with whoever you like, right? When I was, that's why I gave you the Joe Rogan mm -hmm. or the, the um, yeah. Joey Diaz uh, example, but, um, because I, I am still a fan of yours, but I, you know, as a fan, I love the idea of having like exclusive something with this person that I, whose music I, I listen mm -hmm. to, whose social media yeah. I follow, who I feel I know him. See this guy at the, at the Naples, remember I brought you that last, uh, eight by 10 to yeah. autograph. Mm -hmm. That guy said, I met him 15 years ago at a car show in Tampa, uh -huh. okay? Uh -huh. He's like, ask him if I can get a picture. I've known him for 15 oh, years. Wow. Uh -huh. He doesn't know you, yeah. literally. But like, he, he doesn't, but he feels yeah. like he knows you. So, I can only imagine that for the people who have signed up for the patron, I don't feel that they've done it because, oh, they, I'm not saying they don't love the podcast. I'm sure they do. But I feel that they've uh, they've signed up for this because they like the exclusivity of being able to have a one on one with Chingo. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like this one on one um, 
you know, interaction, you're replying to their DMs, you know, you're doing exclusive stuff for them, things that it's like, oh, he appreciates us. Yeah, you appreciate them in addition to you're also paying. So we want to give you, mm -hmm. you know, what you're paying for. You know what I'm saying? Just like anything you go just, purchase. Just like real shit, this episode is brought to you by <laughs> yeah. the patrons. Yeah, so, you know, that's kind of like, that's what I'm saying. I don't want it, people to be, feel like, oh, fuck them. Not no, all it's, about their patrons. No, really, you know, it's not about no, that. I, I'm, an, I'm an artist first. And sure, I, I love, you know, every aspect of this. But it, it really, like fires me up as a creative mm -hmm. because I don't paint paintings like I don't you know I don't but make, you are an artist you do draw I, well. I'm an artist you know mm -hmm. I, I know how to do a little bit of this a little bit of that mm -hmm. like uh, edit video edit random shit you know fire beats I could rhyme some shit it's the flip your masa brick but uh, as a creative it, it, it's it really helps refocus me because it's like yo these it's almost like it's almost like they entered a venue. It's like they're in, they walked in my bakery, mm -hmm. and I'm a chef. Mm -hmm. They they say, "Hey man, I want to come up in there." All right, cool, man. So have a seat. These these folks here front row, da yeah. da da, grab you. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna mail you some stuff, but bam, here's the show. And that's what I want this podcast to be. You know, I want the visual aspect of it. You know, whether you like to listen to it, for, you know, in the headphones or you like to watch it, but a show. That's mm -hmm. what I was telling you. It's off. The, it has to be off the cuff. You know, yeah. we gotta turn up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I said, uh, you know, I, I enjoy it. I'm excited about it. I mean, like I said, we on the, on our, we had a, a, a two-hour drive from Miami to Naples, so we had a lot of time to uh, think and marinate and, you know, um, discuss what we want to do coming up. Um, you know, guys, what's, what's kind of hard about a lot of this stuff is that, you know, um, in addition to um, Chingo and I, like, being the head of, of this uh, Chingo Blink umbrella, right? Um, it sometimes does get overwhelming because we want to be regular human beings. And what I mean by that is like... Like take Mondays off. Yeah, <laughs> or or like just I want to call it a day and just spend time with my baby. You know what I'm saying? Like today, I got home and I was like, I'm glad we got a few, uh, uh, at least a few hours with her before we came back yeah. here to mm -hmm. podcast yeah. because I just, I miss her and... We signed up for a lot. This is all self inflicted Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we totally want to make correct. this, and we want to make this, yeah. and I want a podcast, and I want a festival. And I'm not going to lie to you I guys. Merch. I, I, I give a lot of ideas to Chingo, and so then they're good ideas, and then we're like, we should fucking do it. And then we do it, and then we're like, damn, that's a lot of work. Why did I, <laughs> I should have thought about that. And it's like, no, no, no. And then I try to be positive about it. You know, I'm like, we'll be, we'll You're get like, it. Why we'll am I so creative? <laughs> no, no. So many no. ideas. No, no, no. But it, it works both ways because you'll have an idea and I'll be like, and then I'm trying to figure out how we can execute. It goes both ways. We bounce ideas yeah. off of each other. So it's like when I have an idea, you're like, yeah, like, I like it. Let's do it. And obviously you're always like, but, you know. But I got to go play promoter because I'm on tour. Exactly. And I got, you know, Phoenix, exactly. Arizona coming up. There, stand up live. <laughs> One night only. Two shows. Two shows. 7 and 9 p.m. So, you know, that's that's really my job. This is what I told myself before I went on stage in Naples. Like, yo, uh, you know, you're getting paid. You're not getting paid to tell these jokes. You do this because you love it. Mm -hmm. This is fun. Mm -hmm. This is the part. This is like, this is the break from the travel and the hustle and bustle. So you're really paying me to travel. And I've heard some other comedians say that. But, um, you know, the stage is fun. And, yeah. Uh, and recording music is fun. And it's like, yo, maybe we should give... The, the album to the page. Well, I think like... Yeah, getting creative, you know? I think um, being a comic in general, I think is fun. Um, I think it's... Oh, a, it's the best job in the world. I, I honestly feel like... Okay, so you know when someone... Okay, so maybe... Uh, Professional if, shit talker. That's what my business card should say. <laughs> so you know how people... Um, like doctors, they save lives. It's like, God, that's got to be very rewarding that you save their life, Right. But the best medicine to life is what? Laughter. Exactly. And you provide it relieves, that. Because it relieves what? Um, stress. Well, stress and it also... And, the, and depression. Uh, it gives you uh, endorphins. And, there you go. Endorphins. Dopamine. Also. So really, we selling, we selling endorphins. Yep. We selling feeling. And we, we, we did a toast before the show in Naples. Like, yo, let's give them a show. Let's have fun. Let's relax. Let's let loose. Let's play. Be in the moment, be mm -hmm. present, and get your you know get your chi right, like mm -hmm. get your energy right. So when you go up there, you go bah, 
And there's some laughs, whether it's from some other, whether it's other comedians, whether it's Javi, Midnight, myself, whoever. You, when you see that audience, like, poof, where it's like a wave. I forget who it was that we saw recently. Uh, it might have been like Russell Peters or mm -hmm. somebody, where, boom, he dropped the punchline. And you like literally see it. Yeah. Like I was like, oh, he just tossed a little grenade. Yeah. And how do you feel about the new topics and the new material? Because I'm phasing out. Stuff's getting old to me. And I'm phasing out whole chunks of the old Well, material. I already told you how I feel about it. I feel like um, I like this material because I think it relates to okay. you a lot more. Um, not that the other stuff that you're currently doing isn't relatable. But I feel like... Um, a lot of people want to know what did happen to the old Chingo. Why isn't he wearing the grill anymore? Yeah. Why doesn't he have the yeah. Nike boots you, you or the big shorts, yeah. the big shirts? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody you wants mature. to know. You yeah. shed, you shed layers. Or no. I think I told you about the fan that came up to me in Naples and said um, he wanted to buy the bobble. And he looks at the bobble. He's like, that's not Chingo. I'm like, yeah, it's the new Chingo. And he's like... No, he's like, I don't know why he doesn't still wear the boots and the grill. And I, so I, and I, I told you this. I said, okay. I said, that was 20 years ago, though. I said, are you the same person 20 years ago? He goes, no. I said, are you still dating the same person? I used part of your joke. I said, are you dating the same person from 20 years ago? And the wife just looks at him. I said, he's like, no. And I was like, exactly. I said, so why would Chingo, 20 years, he's 40? I was like, why would he still be doing that? He goes, that's what makes it even funnier is that he's 40 and still trying to look that way. I was like, no, there's not. So you I mean, want him to go up there and I be mean, a clown? No, like, in, certain, in certain situations, you could do it in a fly-ass way. You know, you pick and choose. Because to me, it was like, like a style. It was a look. It was a silhouette type of thing. You well, know I've always told you. It was you a fashion statement. And it was a way to totally like, agree. it was a way to stand out. Because I wasn't going to get into the rap game for my health. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to get into the rap game for fun. And I wasn't going to just... Uh, I knew how much risk it was. I knew what the odds were. Mm -hmm. Like, you probably not... I mean, a lot of motherfuckers want to rap and either get a plan first. So, like, everything down from the visual to the logo to the name to the sound to the everything. And I was... You know, some we would navigate it as we go. Like right now. And... What Mighty Soul was telling the fan is evolution. Yeah. Evolution. That's what, if you had to if you had to sum it up into a word, it, you know, because I could be like, well, I just started just feeling like I was repeating myself as an artist. I just started feeling like people were judging me. It's like, oh, he's just a look. I don't have to listen. You know what I'm saying? Oh, or I never just, even thought about it. And that start way. getting because yeah. they just categorize you like, oh, yeah. it's a gimmick. Oh, it's a gimmick novelty. And it's like, no, people want to hear this shit. And if you play it on your station, it's gonna be lit mm -hmm. because you don't understand Humpty Hump. Yeah, and yeah. Shock G. Shock G was Humpty Hump. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you didn't understand what Digital Underground was doing. How, yeah, you know, I get what you're saying. Like, you know, I, I, I was just big into like, like I, I appreciated Flavor Flav. I appreciated Slick Rick. Like, mm -hmm. even Andre 3000, he was wearing wigs and football mm -hmm. pads. And, and I was like, man, but he pulls it off. Because he had a little headband and he would commit to the shit like the well so did you yeah he, and i told you that from the get go when i when crisco first told me about his friend chingo bling and that's the first time i had heard about you i got to let him know i'm coming to um i was like who is this person he's like now you're going to love him i know what i'm telling you i know your personality you you think he's badass i'm like word okay and so <laughs> and then we got married. I know, right? That's he's probably weird. like, no. Wait, no, you know what's, hit it off. No, you know what's weird is that I remember him telling him, like, he's dope, you're going to like him. I know what I'm telling you, right? And then I told you that my... The I, I grill, just texted him. Let me see if this still has number. The Grill song, remember when it came out, I was obsessed with it. And so my... I got my, a big white cup, big purple and Jemima. Man, my tea shine, more shinier than shine. That's your baby mama, who's the not that most spicy. Me, I cross the border in order to get icy. I could go diamond for diamond against Diddy. Oh, no, he ain't just say what I think he said. Diddy. Diddy. The ring hit the light. Got him thinking that his jiggle better. Take a closer look. Cause Chingo can get lost better. Ice on my gun. Freeze a burn on my lip. Uh, see, I switched up the little delivery and it threw me off. Ice on my gun. Freeze a burn on my lip. My tongue. What? My gun. Mm -hmm. So pizza de pollo. I got dientes de ice. You got dientes de pollo. I got barbecued before the show as well. So I'm seeing a pattern. 
I'm seeing I'm seeing a pattern. So I feel like this new weed y'all got is a little bit too strong, and uh, it's really hard to get the timing and the dosage. Um, and I'm a naturally antsy person, so when the medicine is trying to make me like calm down, calm down, like just stop. You know what I'm saying? That's funny. So it's the medicine and, you know, it's the weed. So. Well, like I said, whenever, it's funny, now that I think about it. I forgot that, my lyrics, man. What the fuck going on? <laughs> Chico de Mayo, May 30th. Burr, 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 burr. Hey, babe, you know what's crazy now that I'm thinking about it? That Crisco told me, mm -hmm. you're really going to like him. He's dope. He's really antsy. Right? No. <laughs> and then, re remember I like was a fan of yours, or I am a fan yeah. of yours, and then my, my best friend, my guy best friend at the time, right? Uh -huh. He was like, you're going to end up marrying this person. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, remember I told you, you would, like, clown me about it? He's like, and then it was like... Marisol used to jam. Banda makes a dance. Yeah, all that types was, of That shit. was our jam <laughs> on the way to the uh, to the river. So that's what, like, our anthem song was on the way there. Yeah, yeah. Her, so her, her friends. Yeah, so if it wasn't playing, it wasn't... So it's like, on the road, we're there. Okay, cool. Play it. Banda and it was makes like, it. And we'd all be crumb. Banda makes it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey. Yes. And then when uh, I actually, like kind of cruise to get onto the river where you park, mm -hmm. we'd be playing it super loud in the Bottom truck. Yeah, it was awesome. And all the white folks would be turning around. We'd all be jamming. They're like, is that Juicy Jane? <laughs> what the fuck is that? Banda, Banda? <laughs> it was hilarious. Though. But you know what I'm saying? Because everybody's like, what are they listening to, right? Because it's got the Banda beat, Bang, too. Like you know what I'm saying? Thing. So anyway, so it was the jam. And that's what we jammed to while we were going to the river. But um, anyway, uh, why did I get into that? Oh, ba back to your look. And so when I first saw you on stage, I was like, Wait, nobody is copying this guy yet? I they am did really surprised. About ten, about 10 years later. Yeah, but I'm saying, well, yeah, that's because the internet happened. And you know what I'm saying? Like, all that stuff started to happen. And, you know, we were able to, uh, MySpace happened. So you were able to, you know, know who you were a little bit more versus, like, it was word of mouth mm -hmm. at the time. Because yeah. I, I, I had just come back from College Station. So I was kind of, like, connecting back to, like, the friends that I had before I left. Because it was different. When I came back, it was different. You got to remember, I was in high school when I left, or you know, my last, my senior years, and then I left to College Station. I was out there, so I didn't really come and party at home. I still partied out there. So it was a little bit, you know, when I came back, I was like, oh shit. And so you were kind of like the thing that was popping whenever I came back. And so then it was like, oh word, okay. Oh, when you came back to Houston. When I came back to Houston, yeah. And so then. Um, and so then I was like, oh my God, but guys, something about me is, um, and, and this is just my personality period. Anything that's, uh, is like risky over the top, over the top, like, very like, like flamboyant, flamboyant. Like, I am like, uh, I can't, I wish there was a word for this in, in English, but in sign language it's this, like, like yeah, it's a, you like, you really like, for I'm, those of y'all that can't uh, watch, uh, <laughs> if you haven't gone to my YouTube, uh, just type in CBTV in the search, it's my new channel. Do the gesture again. So That's it's, a, it's in sign language. Yeah, like what? Like you, you just kind of like, like, almost, top, like not like boy, like you just like so like, oh man, like a, attitude. Like, a, attitude, like not a, no, no, no. It's more like an obsessed, like oh she's badass, like. Mm -hmm. I'm intrigued by it, you know what I'm saying? I'm that's why I love Bad Bunny because he's so oh, over yeah, the top, yeah. you know what I'm he's saying? Uh, right. Migos, you know what I'm saying? Those are yeah. like my, my yeah. uh, you know type of people. Absolutely. I love Mariah Carey. So people hate her, but I love how over the top she is, and she's such a diva. And the best part of it is that that bitch can back it up. That come bitch. at come bitch. at me. Thank you. She bitch. can back it up. It's like and she got the receipts. <sighs> Who are you gonna check, boo? Not me. Bitch, I'm a ride, bitch. Shit, you finna like you finna dust the floor. I want well, one. What do you think she thinks about Ariana Grande? Oh, I think she's annoying. She's probably that's probably what she's thinking. She's probably like, nombre, she's nombre like, yeah, ni a las, ni, ni no, a las chiches, cares. ni a las no, chiches, ni a las chiches, porque <laughs> she, the pubes at least stick out, ni los pubes. <laughs> but um, yeah. So that was obviously those those cuss words brought to you by the patron. <laughs> but babe, the thing that is. Something about that you said was like you didn't want to be known as this novelty. As yeah, novelty. I mean, I, I I I knew it was gimmick, but mm -hmm. I wanted the, it to be fly gimmick because I realized early on, just from being behind the scenes, I realized early on that rap was like wrestling. Mm -hmm. I saw this shit early on, like you know, it's it's kind of like man, you know. I'm a respectful kid. Like my mom raised me right. You know, mm -hmm. I, I got an education. An expensive one at that. Yeah. And I've read books, you know, uh, 
but man, this my this this is my artistic expression. This is a, this is the attitude I'm trying to put out. This is you know what I mean because it's almost like a it, I don't want to say Dr. Jekyll, mm -hmm. Mr. Hyde, mm -hmm. or some fucking bipolar shit. But it's almost like yes, I'm both. Mm -hmm. I'm both. I'm motherfucking chingo bling, mm -hmm. and I'm a, I'm a professional shit talker. But I'm also nice to my mom. It's not like you know what I'm saying. And you're like, also educated. I'm a, yeah, and I'm a husband, and, and I got daughters, and. You know, and I still talk shit, and I can fucking blow up your whole comedy club from the stage, and just you know, just fucking, I do my motherfucking thing. No, and if YouTube delete me, the patrons got me. <laughs> fuck you, no fuck you, mean. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and wrap up because we also have to record an episode of Her Lounge, oh, yeah, Her Lounge episode. podcast. Hey, hey, hey! Look if up. you haven't um, subscribed to that, please do. So if you go to your website, marisolareda.com, if they then they click on podcast, and then it'll give it'll you, give you direct it'll give that. you all the options. You, from there, you pick Spotify. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the homie Rob set all that up. Spotify, iTunes, whatever you want. So I really, 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 really appreciate you guys tuning in week after week. And I know we were inconsistent for a couple weeks. Uh, we're just trying to make sure that we get everything in order because it's it's we're close to it. But just running, running to where it's kind of like, oh, and you're not gonna, all about touring. You're building a network. And also, guys, oh. let them know you're going to start having guests. We're lining that up. Yeah, you know. You know. So don't worry. It's all in the works. Y'all aren't always going to get us and, and, and you know, travel. us talking all the time. I know sometimes it may seem like it's repetitive because we do the same thing almost. Uh, I, I, I'm drinking know. a beer with my wife, you know, in the back. We're, we're sharing a beer. You know, we're sharing a beer, <laughs> sharing an ice cold eighth wonder, which is hosting. Uh, you know, we're collaborating. Chingo de Mayo. We're collaborating once again this year. Chingo de Mayo, mm -hmm. May third. Get your tickets. Chingo de Mayo Fest dot com. Can't wait. Yeah. So thank you guys, and we will see you in Phoenix. We have Atlanta coming up. Uh, Victoria, Austin, Texas. All our Texas no, 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 dates. No, 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 no. Midland. Wait. Victoria was moved to May. to May. Don't forget. So technically, it's Phoenix. it's Austin. It's I'm sorry. It's Phoenix. Okay, and then it's um, Atlanta, Atlanta, Austin, Austin um, Midland, so, uh, Corpus Christi, Cor Corpitos. Then it's um, the three six one. Then it's Abilene. You're gonna be in Abilene as and, well. And I'm writing new shit on stage. I love it. Yeah. These all these folks are getting so much. I mean, it's coming together. I can't wait. I can't wait because I'm only getting better. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys. It's all possible thanks to you. Peace. Y'all have a good one. Take care of yourself. Get plenty of rest. Get, get your sun. sunlight. Get your sunlight. Keep your stress levels low. Thanks. Eat right. Exercise because that's the only way. La pinche corona me la pela. That's the only fucking way. <laughs> yeah,